So hi everyone, my name is Rowan Futak. I'm currently a master's student at the Colorado School of Mines in Golden, Colorado, down the road. And I'm gonna share with you all today a bit about my summer learning, designing, and developing tools with Unidata AWITS. So a little bit of background. Uh, Unidata AWIPS uh, provides supports to data visualization tools, uh, CAVE, that first icon, and then also Python AWIPS. CAVE is a graphical user interface or GUI um, that you can load data into a display looking through different data menus in a product browser with options, whereas Python AWIPS is a little bit more programmatic um, with that data access. So a little bit more lines of code to actually create that plot that you're looking at. Uh, both of these have educational resources for users to be able to learn how to use these tools. And so CAVE has Learn AWIPS CAVE, which is an e-learning course that university students have used. Uh, and then Python AWIPS documentation includes data plotting examples uh, that are in Jupyter Notebooks that you can download and work through to plot data, create plots. And then AWIPS Tips provides blog posts on different updates and new functionality that users can read through to then be able to work in those tools with that new update or a new functionality and adding to it. So some of the motivation behind this, other than just the Unidata mission to provide these data services and tools, is also these educational resources not only lower barriers to using the software tools, but also increase access of them, as well as also serving the university community and helping some of these professors in using educational tools for their students to gain that kind of onboarding process um, in their classes and research. And so I wanted to be able to contribute to these educational resources in some way and also continue that mission. I also think of myself as a perfect example of a user who didn't have experience in these tools. So being able to have these resources to learn how to use them was really important to me. And so I had these three overarching goals for the summer. Not only working with the Python AWIPS example notebooks, going from a task to then website documentation, but also um, being exposed to professional writing and video creation through these blog posts. And then lastly, understanding and applying some different instructional design principles all the way from the start of exploring what material we may be next and who needs this material the most, um, all the way to actually developing it. So I structured each project around these three mountain peaks that you see. We're in Boulder, Colorado, so I thought that was a creative way to do it. Um, starting with this first peak, learn. This is really the research phase of exploring what tool we may need. So that involves community outreach, understanding who our users are, and then exploring what material is already out there and exists. There's a lot of educational resources just within Unidata, um, so you don't have to recreate a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of divergent thinking here, creating all these ideas, and then moving into the design and develop phase, bringing these ideas together to really design it right. That involves scaffolding, um, thinking about what we're gonna assume our user already knows, what foundational knowledge they need to be able to use our tools, and then moving into learning objectives. So thinking about what are the enduring understandings that we want someone to walk away with um, after using a resource. Storyboarding, starting to think about what that tool might look like um, and how it's gonna be created, uh, different educational technology we can use if we're actually creating something like a course, Learn AWIPS Cave, um, there's gonna be different technology that we need to use and continued communication with subject matter experts um, to make sure that we're designing that correctly and using the right terms. So I'm gonna walk through um, kind of three of the goals and the contributions that I made uh, using this sort of framework of learn and then design and develop. So the first one, I'm working with the Python AWIPS example notebooks. So this was a big learning curve for me, uh, but I was really excited to get a lot of experience and some foundational skills. Uh, I don't have a ton of experience before this internship with coding in Python. Um, I never really opened a new environment through a terminal. So this was a lot of large learning curve, but exploring a lot of different ways to access data, um, actually learning how to create a pull request um, and merge new changes to these example notebooks. 
And so the task was initially at the beginning of the summer translating the METAR station plot with MetPy Jupyter notebook example. And so I worked very closely with my mentor, Shay Carter, on translating this. And I contributed the see also section, which was very exciting to have that pull request merged and got experience using Markdown and Jupyter Notebooks, and then doing a little bit of HTML with that website documentation. So a lot of testing and feedback went into that process. And what do I mean by translating a notebook? So on the left side, you see what the, um, an example of a notebook that has not been translated yet. So it has a title, very short description, and then it goes right into the code. So um, translating this notebook into a format that allows a new user to feel like they can maybe not be so overwhelmed by having to read the code themselves, but get a little bit of scaffolding with that. So there's some obje objectives at the top, and then also it's broken down into some meaningful chunks for a user to have um, in those table of contents. So that was the Python AWIPS example notebook. Got a lot of skills with that. And then moving into this next goal of professional writing and video creation. So this was really done through the um, blog post. So the task was to create a video for the blog post on using drawing properties for watches, warnings, advisories display in CAVE. This was a properties window that wasn't available before. So you couldn't really customize those default settings in CAVE when you brought up this display. And so before I even created this video, again, I needed to start with that learning phase of some foundational skills. Camtasia was the application I had to use to create the video, which I've never used before, so I had to learn some of that. Um, I went through old AWIPS Tips blog posts and really figured out the format that it was done in um, and how we provide those videos to our users. And I also went through the Learn AWIPS Cave course that we had. Um, I don't have a ton of experience in meteorology. So I had to learn these terms, had to figure out how to use CAVE before I was able to create a video about CAVE. <laughs> and so moving into design and develop, um, my contributions involved a lot of testing in CAVE and feedback with my mentors as subject matter experts. Um, and that feedback led to some development of some added functionality. Um, as I was going through trying to create the video, I found some stuff that wasn't working. So that was really helpful um, to prepare that for that new release. And then I also created finally the Camtasia video. So this is a snapshot from the YouTube video I created. Um, this YouTube link is up, but it's not um, public yet. So it'll become public once that blog post is published. So that was really exciting to be able to create something that's gonna go on the AWIPS Tips blog. And last but not least, um, understanding and applying an instructional design model to actually creating a new e-learning module for specifically Python AWIPS. So we have that e-learning on Learn AWIPS Cave. Um, and I thought there really needed to be bridging this gap between a tutorial that could introduce users to Python AWIPS before they actually jumped into those data um, plotting examples that are in our documentation. And so some foundational skills. Again, I had to learn the technology that was going to be used to create those lessons, um, which was done this Articulate RISE 360. And then there was also that community outreach. I needed to actually speak to our users to see how would they actually use this module in maybe a class or professionally. Um, and so I had a couple back and forth emails with university professors um, and users and also helped out in an evaluation meeting with Texas A&M professors who had used the Learn AWIPS CAVE course um, to really get a feel for what their students already knew, um, how much coding experience did they have, what foundational skills were going to be important for this module. And so I started this process um, going through, this is an instructional design uh, model here. So understanding the learners, that's that community outreach part, and then going through this uh, kind of feedback loop feedback loop, iterating on this process of setting goals, those learning objectives, what do I want them to learn, um, designing activities and experiences, so how am I going to assess um, through an activity whether the learner actually achieved that task or understand what's going on, supporting that with content, so this is also a way to link out to pre-existing material already within Unidata for them to learn more, um, and then the last step of actually delivering the tool, which will come next when we hopefully deliver it and these university professors may actually use it in their classes and assess how it went, um, what went well, and then kind of restart this process again through that feedback loop to make sure we're continuing to work on that tool. So this is the Learn Python AWIPS on the left side. You see the homepage of what the uh, educational resource will look like. 
And this module has four lessons in it, um, starting from investigating what data is available all the way to plotting the data. And it's an overarching goal of hopefully the user will walk away being able to create an informative plot with AWIPS data in Python. And on the right side, you see the plot that they'll end up with um, from working through the notebook uh, during the activity and the lessons. And so it's not super complex, uh, but it is a great introduction to creating that scaffolding so that then a user can go into those data plotting examples and already understand how to request data and walk through that process and then get into some more detailed analysis with those examples. So really excited about that and hopefully that will become live and published by the end of the internship, which is soon. <laughs> Um, so returning to this general scaffolding um, before I finish, I thought it was really exciting to be able to frame how I went through each of these projects in really designing the right thing and getting to know what Unidata and specifically Unidata AWIPS is all about and what our users need. Um, and then getting to go through this process of how we actually go about developing a new resource for people to use these tools. So yeah, thank you very much. Just want to thank my mentors and then also the other summer interns and then Unidata as a whole for the opportunity. So thank you for listening and I'll open it up to questions. Yeah, so were there any takeaways you had that you think would be applicable advice to oh, the Unidata man. staff as, as, <laughs> as we uh, develop our own you know, documentation, presentations, things like that? Like, is there anything that you would just tell us are, are good key points to keep in mind? Ooh, great question. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, no, it's gonna be. <laughs> um, in terms of like developing like new resources for other projects, if I'm understanding that question correctly. I think so. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of really great uh, models and like structures that you can follow when designing something. And I think it was really helpful to keep in mind that we get excited to jump right to, I wanna create the actual like lesson or activity or the resource and to take a step back and really think about, is this what is gonna accomplish the initial goal, right? If a user comes to you and says, I really wanna learn this, is the resource you're creating gonna fix that problem or is it something else? So I think I always kept wanting to jump to the build the resource stage and uh, especially Nicole helped me take a step back and really go through the process of what is needed, who needs it the most, and will this training actually end up helping. So I would always keep that that initial step in mind. For uh, Jupyter Notebooks, you said this was kind of your first experience with them. Um, do you think we should create some more like scaffolding and add around that, or do you think there was enough stuff on the internet that you were able to kind of find your way? I've just ta I've taught a lot of like intro to Python, and it's you know it's not super easy. You know, I work with notebooks every day, and so I just kind of need to turn the clock back a couple of years to like when I was first getting started. So, if you have any comments on that? I would be great. Yeah, so I'll first say, I don't know if everyone remotely heard the question, but like my experience with Jupyter Notebooks and I guess that like onboarding process of learning how to use them. Um, I think there's a lot of information out there and there was a lot of helpful resources just in like the educational resources that um, like Unidata has and links out to on their page that I was able to use. I think the hardest process for me was, um, I do have some coding experience. So like I kind of understand how some stuff works. But the, I was able to jump right in if I used, I forget what it's called, but the Jupyter notebooks that are like online, that felt really easy to me because I just opened a browser and was able to get to it and start working in it. Um, the process I think that was the hardest for me was learning, like actually having Conda and like a terminal mm -hmm. and opening a Jupyter notebook through a terminal and understanding how to open a new environment in the terminal. So that I did not necessarily learn from online resources. I'm sure I could, but I very much walked through it with my mentors to make sure I set it up correctly. Yeah. Super helpful, thanks. 